spring 1945. Germany was losing World War II, and everyone knew it, especially the scientists from the rocket testing facility in Penemunde, Germany. In 1944, Dr. Werner von Braun and his team there had created the V-2, the most advanced rocket known to man. But it wasn't enough to win the war. And with both American and Russian forces advancing on their position, the scientists needed to decide which side to surrender to. Almost everyone headed southwest to meet the Americans. Almost overnight, the American rocket program was the best in the world. Inheriting von Braun's technical expertise, his team, and almost 100 working V-2 rockets. The scientists were relocated to White Sands, New Mexico to continue their research. The next year, James Van Allen, for whom the Earth's radiation belts are now named, began outfitting a V-2 with telescopes to measure cosmic rays from space. The general supervision of the whole uh, high-altitude work was done by James Van Allen. I was hired by Jim, so I was a junior physicist at the time, that was 1946, and worked with him for four years. While Van Allen prepared his experiment, photo specialist Clyde Holliday had another idea, one which would give high-altitude photography a whole new meaning. Of course, pictures had been taken from balloons, but this, you know, there's a big difference between 100,000 feet and 100 kilometers. Holiday got the go-ahead to include a camera on the October 1946 rocket flight. They were armored uh, cameras because they had to be recovered uh, in the field after the rocket came down, so they had to withstand impacts. On October 24, 1946, systems were a go for launch. We had a blockhouse, of course, for protection, and there was always a danger that the rocket could explode on the stand. I foolishly, now in retrospect, stepped outside the blockhouse to take pictures of the takeoff. I shouldn't have, but uh, we were lucky. We didn't have any accidents. And it took about 30 seconds before the V-2 rocket disappeared in the clouds and the whole flight was over after about eight minutes. And then we knew it had impacted somewhere, but we wasn't sure where. Uh, the Army, of course, had a very efficient search team, which usually found the rocket very quickly. Uh, the photograph survived very well, and yes, I thought this was a First time that pictures had been taken from high altitudes, and this was a new way of looking at the Earth. The photos revealed never before seen details the Earth's curvature, terrain features, and cloud patterns. And eventually we were able to persuade meteorologists to use cloud pictures to make weather predictions. Don't forget, they had never done this before. They only used winds and temperatures for weather predictions. Although the film had survived, most of the equipment had not. You know, every time we had a launch, I had to reconstruct uh, uh, the whole instrumentation and start from the beginning. This is what led to the idea of a satellite, keeping up the instrumentation for long periods, like we thought hours or even days or weeks. In other words, you need satellites. Don't forget, at the time, people were talking about satellites, but in terms of large manned space stations, you know, with dozens of astronauts, uh, entertaining themselves in a space station. It was all pie in the sky. Nothing very practical because we didn't have rockets large enough to do the job. But we did have rockets large enough to launch, let's say, a satellite weighing of the order of maybe 50 to 100 pounds. Singer needed Von Braun to buy in on the satellite idea. I knew Von Braun fairly well. 
And I tried to convince him that we could launch satellites with a minimum amount of instrumentation and make them very useful. And that got his interest. Von Braun followed through. Here, William Pickering, James Van Allen, and Werner Von Braun celebrate the January 1958 launch of Explorer 1, America's first ever satellite. And it wasn't long before the U.S. military used satellites for another purpose, reconnaissance. I learned that later on that there was, in fact, a reconnaissance office in the Pentagon. And as a matter of fact, I knew the people in the office but didn't know what they were doing. In this case, the fight was controlled, but the future use of rocket power knows no limits. What started as a simple rocket experiment in 1946 led to the world of satellite technology, instant worldwide communications, geolocation, reconnaissance, and more. Technologies that have changed the world forever. I'm truly amazed to see how far we have come.